Brian, what do you think up there? Uh, up that way? Where? This way. You think? I don't know. Hello there, afternoon. Last year we published a video titled Snow Tent Blasted by Spindrift. Just wanted to take you on a quick tour of this campsite here just to show you some of the changes I've made to the way I set up my snow tent based on what happened to us last year. So this can be a little bit more tricky than what you might think. So as you can see I've buried this half igloo style kind of wall in front of the vestibule. So the vestibule being this area underneath here where we do the cooking. So what I'm worried about is if we do get blasted by wind during the night, and there is actually a forecast of strong wind forecasted in that direction, what happens is the, the snow is blasted off the ground so that the snow starts coming sideways up underneath the tent. So if you hold the camera down there, you can see that any sideways snow coming in will hopefully hit that wall and won't come up underneath our tent fly. I'll show you just around the side here. I've also built up some of these snow bricks just to block block our side entries. Um, and one thing is when you are burying the side of your tent like this, I've found it's best to avoid uh, burying the very bottom of the fly. What will happen is if you completely bury the, the bottom of the fly, you'll end up with too much condensation inside the tent. So just here as well you can see of Got that little side wall uh, to block the, the spin drift from coming in, but still allowing plenty of airflow for us to dry out. <clears throat> Around the other side. So if you look at it from down low, down here, you can see that that's uh, probably 10 inch wall just blocking the sides of the tent. So if Spindrift comes in, it will hit that small ice wall and just go up. We can take plenty of snow hitting us from a downward direction, but it's that Spindrift coming up underneath the tent that can just be an absolute nightmare. <laughs> Particularly at the front doorway of the fly where your vestibule pit is. So that's why I've got that probably one meter high wall and if I hold the camera down here level to the base of the tent you can see you can barely even see the tent so this is the direction that this, the spin drift will come in from straight in there straight up and hopefully we will be completely protected tonight I've just come out here without my gaiters on it's almost sunset so I just wanted to make a few final preparations for tonight there's the polk, the snow sled that we use to drag all of our equipment in here. And as you can see, at the rear end of the tent, we also have this big boulder, which will hopefully give us a, a bit of a wind brace if the wind does come in from that direction. And I haven't bothered to build a snow wall on this side. So this is, believe it or not, probably one weakness on the setup, but pretty confident any wind coming in from this direction will be blocked by that big boulder. And the, if the weather forecast is correct, we shouldn't have to worry about any wind drift coming in this direction. Hello, back again. Just wanted to give a quick demo on making little snow bricks with your shovel. One brick ready. Another one. So you probably noticed from the camera before we had a little bit of a weakness just on that back corner of the 
tent. Another nice chunky snow brick. Come in close. So I just improved the side wall slightly on here, but still just avoiding touching the tent fly with the snow. The trick is I want the tent fly to be not touching the snow. As you can see there, it's kind of touching it just a little bit. As you can see, I'm in the snow tent now. There's Christina getting a bit of sleep. So, let's just hold the camera this way. You can see what it looks like looking out. Uh, one of the final steps is I just dug a bit more snow in here just so when I zip that up, we're completely closed in. And another tip is always bring your snow shovel inside with you when you go to sleep at night. And that's where I'm cooking, just like last year in my video, I always like to cook in exactly the same place. I actually just leave the snow shovel in that position there, and that holds the tent fly away from the naked flame of the cook set. So, it's just a two-in-one use for the snow shovel. And, there we go, zipping up. Plenty of snow in here, plenty of fresh snow in here for making drinking water. Here we are, all zipped up. A couple of final touches down there. As you can, as you can see, the, some of the snow is still touching the fly. So, just be a matter of packing that down before we go to sleep. And we should be completely windproof, at least from that direction. See, Polk's not very good on steep slopes like this. Soon we should be back onto more level ground or more flat ground. 